Interpreting tornado regression coefficients. A tornado graph showing regression coefficients shows the magnitudes of the bars scaled or normalized by the standard deviation of the output and the standard deviation of the input. In other words, this number shown in the bar is not expressed in terms of either actual dollars or other units. For the output total cost, input weather-related delays has a regression coefficient, also called standard beta, of a 0.60. This means that for every unit of a standard deviation increase in weather-related delays, the output total cost will increase by 0.60 standard deviations of total cost. In other words, both standard deviations of the input and the output are needed for a full interpretation of this coefficient. 92. Exit this tornado chart and position your cursor on the weather-related delays variable on cell K18. By browsing results, you should be able to see the following chart and out of it, read its simulated standard deviation of $5,854. 93. On the other hand, by going to cell K21, total cost, and browsing results, and then changing the chart to probability density, you could read the output's standard deviation of $9,678. You can also interpret the coefficient of 0.60 by descaling it by converting from standard deviations to units. To descale a standard beta coefficient, Multiply it by the standard deviation of the output and divide it by the standard deviation of the input. 0.60 times 96.78 divided by 5,854 equals 1. This tells you that for an increase of one unit in the input weather-related delays, you obtain an increase of about 0.60 unit in total project cost. Correctly interpreting regression coefficients, which in this case is actually standard beta coefficients, is statistically robust, but requires a somewhat deep understanding of statistics. Many decision makers in the marketplace may lack this level of understanding. That is why, in practice, even though this is a robust statistical measure, it may be difficult to convey its total significance to an audience of decision makers. The next steps may prove helpful to aid in its understanding. 94. With the regression coefficients tornado graph display, grab with your cursor the first bar of weather-related delays and drag it out of the chart, first making sure there is available space outside the graph and it is not covering the whole window. This will produce the following scatter plot graph. A scatter plot is a type of plot or mathematical diagram using Cartesian coordinates to display values for typically two variables for a set of data. Typical at-risk scatter plots show on the x-axis the input or independent variable, in this case weather-related delays, and on the y-axis the dependent or output variable in this case, total project cost. The number of dots being shown is the number of iterations simulated. Therefore, in this case, 10,000 data points are shown. Notice that the Pearson correlation coefficient is shown on the statistics table, 0.6066. This is the same value that was placed on the bar of the tornado from which this scatter plot was derived. This coefficient somehow measures the relative distance of all the 10,000 data points with respect to an imaginary straight line that goes along the relationship between these two variables. The closer this number approximates to 1, the closer these points align around this straight line. In other words, all points aligned a straight imaginary line here would imply a correlation coefficient of 1, regardless of the slope of such a relationship. Conversely, slope or rate of change of one variable with respect to the other dependent one is not measured by the correlation coefficient. 
This coefficient somehow measures the strength of the linear relationship on the variation of one dependent variable with respect to the other one, not the rate of change between them. Also, notice that this scatter plot displays a couple of delimiter lines, a vertical and a horizontal line that can be moved to different points of their corresponding axis. 95. Place the vertical delimiter by either dragging it around or writing its value on top of the delimiter at $10,000. Do the same thing to the horizontal delimiter at the $115,000 level, which happens to be, by the way, the total deterministic baseline cost. This will create four different quadrants with four different numbers on their corners that represent the conditional probabilities of each one of them. That is, the percentage of iterations for which both conditions of dependent and independent variables meet certain levels for both variables. For example, compare quadrants 1 and 4. On the first quadrant, you will find that there's a 32.2% probability that weather-related delays will be above $10,000 and the total cost will be over $115,000. By comparison, there is only a 5.5% probability that weather-related delays will be above $10,000 and total cost will be below this threshold level of $115,000. This gives the analyst a relative idea of how likely it is one conditional scenario against any other alternative one. 96. By contrast, Go back to the tornado graph and drag out to a new scatter plot the very last of the variables at the bottom of the chart, activity 5. Notice that its correlation coefficient is barely above zero. Notice that this scatter plot shows an indeterminate cloud of totally dispersed points. No clear upward or downward relationship can be visually identified. This is a strong tip on visually understanding the reading out of this scatter plot, namely that activity 5 does not have any impact whatsoever, either positive or negative, upon the results of total cost. This clearly indicates that this variable plays an insignificant role on determining the magnitude and direction of total cost.